Hi, it's Scott Jansen here. I want to jump onto the subject in regards to confusion language and what confusion language does for our clients. Now, I'm an avid, avid fan of using confusion type language for my clients. Confusion tends to be one of the quickest way that we can get rid of conscious thinking, which is that pesky part of the mind as a hypnotist we need to get rid of immediately, and delve more into unconscious land. Now, the great thing about confusion language or when we're using confusion type patterns or, you know, the Ericksonian type thing or mind meaning language or something like that is that when we put a client into trance, the confusion language or the confusion type uh, metaphors that we're using that got rid of conscious thinking now starts to make sense to the unconscious. So believe it or not, by putting a client into trance with confusion language, they're actually starting the therapy process as well. And that's... I think, you know, almost killing two birds with one stone. And I think that's very powerful for us as a hypnotist. But if you're like me and you love confusion language, or if you've ever started to explore or been taught confusion language, you should notice one pretty obvious thing. It is damn confusing to understand. It is damn confusing to learn. And it's damn confusing to memorize. So what tends to happen as a hypnotist, we want to use this cool, fancy confusion type language. But when our client hears it, all they hear is a therapist being as confused as them. And it's very hard to be confident and use confusion type language at the same time. Now, you might be just thinking, well, it's the confusion language that puts them into trance. It definitely does. But if you're not confident in the way that you use it, you're going to hit a brick wall. If you sound as confused as your client, you'll hit a brick wall. But there's something else a lot of therapists don't understand. Do you realize that when you're using confusion type language, if your client does not accept the language, you have done nothing for the trance. The language I want you to realize means nothing. It's the intention of the confusion that it creates that does all the work for us. So what tends to happen is these therapists get these long-winded techniques and language patterns, and they throw them out there and hope that their client goes into trance. And nine times out of 10, your client will sit there and look at you and go, wow, is English your first language? This is really weird. Why are you asking me things like that? And the client starts to get frustrated and they start to think that if they can't follow the language, it means that the session won't work. So we hear a lot of therapists using this really cool, sophisticated language that has no results. So I want to offer some advice of how we can do this. One easy step that we can add to any confusion language, whether you're looking at quantum linguistics, mind language, Ericksonian, it's all the same thing. It's all doing the same thing. If, and this is a big if, if you add this simple strategy into it. The easiest way that your client can accept the confusion type language is to use their content, is to use the content they've talked about, is to use the content of the construct of the problem, is to use anything your client has talked about with or almost embedded in a confusion type strategy. So if a client says, you know, I'm a smoker and I want to quit, you can use that content of that problem and add some confusion language to it. So, for example, and it's just top of my head, and it's just an idea of what you could do with it. A client has said, you know, I'm a smoker, and I want to quit. We could simply say, okay, so is it more that you want to quit, or is there something going else beyond what you've actually thought about and you could do as this person? Whatever the case may be. Now, it sounds a bit confusing to listen to because the content, I'm not, the context of it, I'm not sitting in front of a client. But you can see how quickly we can use the content with that confusion type language. Now, if I just looked at my client and said, okay, so you've got that problem, what goes beyond that that's not here anywhere but now, that's right here in front of me, I've used no content, and my client's going to look at me and go, what? But if we've slowed our approach down and I've added the idea of the smoker, them feeling healthy, or them wanting to quit, or them wanting to save money as a non-smoker, and I encapsulate that into some uh, confusion-type strategies, it is likely to be more accepted for my client. Why? Because I'm using the content of the actual session itself. It's going to be more accepted as a hypnotist, as a client. But something else happens with confusion language. Do you realize that you can actually use confusion style language outside of your office? And it's a very sophisticated and covert tool that you can actually use in sales. You can use to motivate a crowd. You can use as a life coach. You can use when you're selling some content that you have or selling your product to make more sales. Confusion language has its place outside of the office. And it's even more powerful outside of the office if you add a couple more strategies to it to suit a different context. Confusion language by itself outside of an office will make you sound like you're on drugs. 
and your people you're talking to or the crowd you're talking to will probably spend more time trying to run away from you because you're acting weird rather than accepting what you're talking about. So there's a couple of little tips we can use on the outside of your office, which is use slight confusion type language, but don't go overboard. And again, use the content and the context of the situation and when you're in sales, use that sales context. If you're motivating a crowd, use that context for your confusion language. We almost want to be able to stretch our own mind and start to understand confusion language so we can get out in the real world or outside of our office and use it more appropriately out there. As soon as we start to realize that the language itself is doing all the work for us, we will get blocked every time. If you have it in the back of your mind that using the confusion language and all the weird language that our client can't follow, and because they can't follow, they'll go instantly into trance, that's a misnomer, it's a myth. If we're thinking about it that way, you'll see how quickly you'll hit a brick wall. What we need to do is strategically think, what confusion style language can I add that suits the context that I'm in, that suits the content that I'm working with? If it's for anxiety, think about it that way. If a client wants to overcome a fear of dogs, you can think about it that way if you use that content inside your confusion type language. So I've seen many hypnotists, some have come up to me at seminars or events that I've been to, or you know, big hypnotherapy board meetings or whatever the case may be, and I can have a bit of a chat to them, you know, find out more about them, and then instantly they drop this confusion language out in the middle of the conversation itself, and it becomes obvious. Okay, it becomes a non sequitur. It doesn't fit the content. But you can do the same strategic thing if you're talking to somebody and you use the content that we're talking about and encapsulate it with some confusion type language. And this is the value of conversational hypnosis, that we can use normal hypnotic tools inside the real world or outside of the real world, if you will. If you're using confusion language and you're memorizing scripts or memorizing long language patterns, if that's the way you want to go, fantastic. But just remember in the back of your mind, it is not the language that's creating the confusion. It's the intent of the language that is making a client confused. So think about it like this. What if instead trying to confuse your client through the language, what if a normal conversation you were having with a client had the byproduct of confusion? That's the difference between a good hypnotist and a real great master hypnotist. They can almost think two or three steps ahead and know what content and what context and what confusion style language would suit the situation they're in. And they can jumble these sentences up very, very quickly. They can add content into it. And it just has a slight twist of confusion to it. It's not overdone, but it's enough where people you're talking to, you think, wow, it's an interesting way to look at things. Or I've never thought about it like that before. Or you see them hanging off every word you say because you're pushing them outside of normal conscious thinking. But as soon as you're obvious with confusion and you become as confused as the person you're trying to confuse, it's obvious. And your client's conscious mind will poke its head back out. The walls will come back up. And now you're dealing with someone that seems, quote unquote, very resistant. So the advice here, if you're using confusion language, add content in regards to the situation you're in. Don't just throw the language out and hope for the best. The more content you can add to your language pattern, the more accepted it's going to be. And if you sound as confused as the person you're trying to confuse, step back, think about what you're doing, and take another approach. That's all for now. I uh, hope to hear your success with this. My name's Scott Jansen, and uh, thank you for watching. Bye for now.